Hi, everyone. I want to tell you a story, my story. Growing up, my dream was to be a pediatrician. It felt like a great idea, one that I could rally behind, and something that would make me feel pretty good, because let's face it, helping kids out, it really doesn't get much better than that. Now, it was also something that was familiar to me, because both of my parents had careers in the medical field, so I had those touch points. I was comfortable with it. And there's no question that both of my parents would have been thrilled. My Italian-American mother and my Chinese immigrant father would have been smiling ear to ear if I was a physician. But I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV, but I do work in television. I'm a studio host at NFL Network, and trust me when I tell you, no one saw this coming, not even me. My parents, they didn't have this up on the vision board for me when they thought about my career. Although to be fair, in the 80s, I actually don't know if vision boards were an actual thing. And to be honest with you, I don't even know the mug that they would have been able to slap up there at that time. When I reflect back on my career, it's obvious that it wasn't a straight line, but it is disappointing to think that it almost didn't happen. Now, as a child, I loved playing sports. I always had a bat, a racket, a ball, or a glove in my hand. And for the astute sports fans, it didn't matter if the glove was half the size of my body and clearly on the wrong hand. I just wanted to go out there and play. And, and by the way, I do think it's important for me to highlight the fact that this was not the peak of my athletic career. In fact, just a few short years later, I was told, hey, stop bouncing the ball around the house. It's making too much noise. So ball security. Any sports fans, they know how important that is. I was working on that task when I was five years old. Now, if I wasn't playing sports and dominating the Fisher-Price Rim back at my house, I was watching games. In fact, I watched countless hours of games. But it never occurred to me that being a sportscaster was an actual career. Now, don't get me wrong, fundamentally, I understood that there were broadcasters who I saw and I heard as I watched those games, but there was such a massive disconnect. I could not conceive of the idea that that was actually a career that I could have. Why was that? Well, the simple answer is I never saw anyone who looked like me doing the job. When I watched those games, I never had those idea seeds sprinkled in my brain. It wasn't until my freshman year in college I got cable TV for the first time, and I look up at the screen, and I see Michael Kim on ESPN. And I think to myself, you got to be kidding me. I never saw an Asian dude do sports before. And then like that, something clicked in my head. I went from thinking maybe I could be a doctor doing segments on the local news to maybe I could do this sports thing for real, full time. I'm fortunate to say that after just a few years after college, I was actually co-anchoring shows with Mike at ESPN. I've been ridiculously blessed to host shows at SiriusXM Radio, NBA TV, ESPN, Pac-12 Networks, and now NFL Network. I've had a career that's gone 20 years and hopefully at least another 20 more, but I've made a lot of friends in the sports broadcasting community over the years. And there's one thing that always stands out in many of those conversations. A lot of my colleagues, they knew that they wanted to be sportscasters at a very young age. See, when they were watching games, they had those idea seeds sprinkled all over their brain. Now, one problem that I see is the storytelling experience, which begins before kids can speak, typically doesn't include diverse stories. And the ones that do can use some stereotypes as the backdrop. Currently, there are five, just five publishing houses that absolutely dominate the literature landscape. In fact, those five publishing houses they control 80% of the book market trade. Now, it's significant. It sounds like a big number, but here's why it's significant. Because when you have powerful distribution, you control the message and the stories that we have access to. And when it comes to that message, the Cooperative Children's Book Center at the University of Wisconsin, they publish every single year data on the publishing industry. And some of the results are alarming. Short story is, you're more likely to see a story that features a white character, an animal, or an inanimate object than one that features a diverse character. And the numbers aren't close. Now, let me give you some context. If you're a member of the Asian American community, like me, the likelihood that you're gonna see a story that features an animal is double the opportunity to see a story that features an Asian character. And oddly enough, or I should say it's a little eerie to see the numbers and the similarities that are close for the African-American community. I'd go through the rest of the statistics here, but to be honest with you, it is embarrassingly, shockingly bad to see the lack of diversity in children's stories for the other demographics that are listed here. And I get it. You're sitting there and you're thinking, well, is it important? Why does it matter? How significant can a story to a three-year-old actually be? Well, I got you. 
The American Psychological Association publishes a report, and this thing struck me. I, I mean, there's a lot to unpack here, but there's two lines in particular. Three-year-old children in the U.S. associate some racial groups with negative traits. By age four, children in the U.S. associate whites with wealth and higher status. Now, if that doesn't raise a red flag as to what stories we're telling children, to be honest with you, I don't know what else will. Now, I believe part of the reason for those scary statistics is the fact that children have a plethora of options when it comes to stories that feature white characters, animals, and inanimate objects. But the diverse stories are not only limited in availability, but more importantly, have limiting narratives. A lot of times, you'll open up the book and they'll focus in on things such as physical appearance. Trust me, I know that we can do better. I want to take a macro view for just a moment and ask this question. What do we think happens when we inundate children with stories that feature characters with doing wonderful adventures, but they look nothing like them? I think we're adding friction in the development of children when it comes to feeling validated, increasing self-esteem, and fostering empathy in all kids. If we just shift the focus of those stories to have inclusive narratives, I know we can enhance feelings of self-worth in all children. I know firsthand that stories have transformational power. I also know that exposure to a different perspective can change your life. In the large scope of sports and media, all it took was just one person doing a job to alter the trajectory of my life. Now, I've used that premise to try to affect as many people as possible. Over the last 20 years, I've spoken to thousands of college students, and I realize that it is too difficult to try to change the lack of diversity in journalism classes so late in the educational path. In fact, when there was an insufficient supply of stories surrounding the attacks on the Asian American community since 2020, I realized that pipeline's got to change. It's one of the many reasons why I wrote a children's book that features an Asian character in a leading role. It's something that I never had as a kid, and quite honestly, based off of those statistics, we don't have nearly enough of. Now, I'm hoping that more visibility and diverse stories will spark an interest in kids to pursue creative mediums. Exposure, it is powerful. It's time to empower a generation with the ability to not just think about a few possibilities, but truly believe that they can achieve anything. The old adage, you can't win a marathon without taking a first step, could not be more true with the dilemma facing our society. All it takes is one moment, one story, and that can offer a path that was previously inconceivable. It's time to shower those idea seeds that I referenced before and see the incredible achievement that blooms. Thank you.